Today, we're going to talk about what winning looks like. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show. Part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, go over to flfnetwork.com. Put in HGBT in the memo field, and you will get a sweet mug. You'll also be able to live stream. I'm slowly fixing my camera. I should have done this before I recorded, but I got Mr. Rubber. There we go. I think that's good. Maybe. There we go. <clears throat> it's hot in here. Today, we're going to talk about what winning looks like. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show with a friend for your comments, your feedback. Uh, you guys are just amazing. Yesterday's show has been by far one of the best shows that we've done. Thank you for everyone who's helping this show grow. And we have been growing, and that's been a, a beautiful thing. So thank you for that. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Over to flfnetwork.com. Put an HDBT in the memo field. You'll get a sweet mug like you see behind me. For those of you who are watching. And then also, you can live stream the conference. You can't go to our conference anymore unless you already have tickets because we're sold out. We are sold out of our conference. But you can live stream it if you become a member. So go over to the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network flfnetwork.com put in hgbt in the memo field get the mug get tons of other great benefits live stream the conference and uh, man there's just so much great stuff behind the paywall that you get access to and man you're supporting us as we proclaim the lordship of jesus in every area of life and that's what i want to talk about today so you've been thinking about the kellers of the world the phil visors of the world all of these different big eva people and one of the reasons that the 80 Robleses, the John Harris's, the other commentaries, dare I say myself, cross politic. The reason why we have been able to grow and to build platforms like this and to get the conference attendance that we do is because we bring extreme clarity to our positions. We express, articulate, don't deviate from our values, from our mission, what we are here to do. We are here to proclaim the lordship of Jesus in every area of life. When we make mistakes, we apologize. When we call out people, we're specific. When we are talking about a subject, we try to be as precise as possible. We don't talk in the abstract. We don't become like the evangelifish and just try to wiggle around from everything. But we are trying to convey the vision, the values that we believe and hold to and what we're striving for. And that is why we grow. And that is why Big Eva doesn't grow. And that's why they're actually shrinking and failing away and these platforms are dissipating. And this is the lesson I want you to learn in your business, as a leader, in your career, that people rally behind who you are. People rally behind what you stand for, and people rally behind where you're going. And if they don't really know who you are, if they don't really know what you stand for, if they don't really know where you're going, then why would they ever want to follow you? And then there are people where you thought that they identified with you. You thought that you could follow them because your values were the same, because you represented the same things that you represented. You thought you could follow them because they were going, you thought, to the same place that you're going. You thought that their vision for their ministry, for their career, for their business, whatever it was, you thought that you could identify with them. But they were a little unclear, and you were able to give them grace because they said a lot of really great things. And so you did follow them. You read their articles. You shared their blogs. You went to their churches. But now, because they've seen how our channels have grown, how our networks have grown, how our platforms have grown, and how our engagement is far superior than to a lot of these. And in fact, their engagement is mostly negative engagement, where you're quote tweeting them, where you're sharing their stuff, mocking them, or pointing out their errors, or showing out how ridiculous or inconsistent they're being. And they realize this. And so over the last year or so, 
maybe a little more. We have seen them attack. And this is how you know you're winning because they never stay with one strategy. They've never stayed with one strategy. They first tried to ignore us, but they couldn't because we had a why for people to rally behind. We had a clear vision. We took stands on certain issues, on specific issues, and we tried to be get to the truth as much as possible. We tried to convey the truth where you had to hold us accountable. And if we were wrong, then you could count call on it, call us out on it. If we were right, you some of you called us out on it too. But we are clear and precise. And even if not all the things we say you agree with, you can trust us. You could trust us because we're not doing the squishness. We're not trying to wiggle out of anything. You know where we stand. And for the most part, those, those of you who are faithful listeners, I know for a fact, you identify with us, you can align with us, and you are willing to go where we are going. And that's the power of our platform. That is the power of where we are at. And this is true, not just in the communications industry, like we're in, not in the podcast world, not in the blog world, but people will do this in whatever industry you're in, whatever business you are in. If you are able to be clear and articulate what your company stands for, who you stand for in, in your career, if you can articulate what your product is and you can further and develop that and clearly convey it, people will rally around that and support it. That's what Apple does or used to back in the Tim Cook days. And kind of the legacy of that continues on today. So we know we're winning because it went from the ign ignoring to the passive, aggressive, indirect comments, online pundits, don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. You should only get your sources from the accredited elites, from those on the uh, acceptable, peer-reviewed platforms, the ones who work in the nuance and will give you both sides and understand and give room for both sides of a conversation or topic. And then it moved into calling us sinners, not liking our tone, disagreeing with how we did things, saying that there's no room for online pundits like ourselves. There's no room for the people that are angry and that have those tones and they're very harsh and they're black and white. Black and white. And then... It didn't move. See, it goes from this to this to this, and it never sticks because we, you know where we stand. You know what we believe in because we're clear and precise. And so when they come at us with attacks and you read them and you see them, you can judge clearly about if they what they say are true or not. Sometimes it is. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we have to apologize. But for the most part, they are off base. They are swinging. They're shooting blind. They have no idea why they are losing. And I'm telling you, it's because the why. And for so long, we were able to gain ground because the people, it was hard to identify with them. It was hard to rally behind any position because they didn't take positions. And then it rolled out in 2020 where they started to be clearer about their why. And it turns out that the people that were reading them, that were supporting them, their base, quote unquote, not to use a political term, I don't mean it in political terms, I'm just talking about their base, their customers. It turns out their why doesn't align with their base. And they start losing more. And their engagement goes down. Because their why is far removed from the base. And so they have seen this. They're panicking. They don't know what's going on. They thought they were mimicking the popular opinions of the day. They thought that they were going to be safe because, after all, everyone is kneeling for the flag. Everyone is rioting in the streets. <laughs> At least that's what their circles tell them. And so then we started to see the Keller attack on John Harris or the engagement at the very least. And we saw the Joe Carter and AD Robles attack on Twitter, which he deletes them all. And then we see the, the Gospel Coalition hit pieces on people like AD Robles. They're panicking and they're desperate because 
they're so out of touch with their base. And they're so scared of taking a position. And that's where we are. That's where we are. So the lesson that I want us to learn from this is the importance of understanding your why, why you started this business, why you're in this career, why you're in this industry, why do you podcast, why do you write blogs, why do you serve in this ministry? Are you able to articulate a vision? Are you able to clearly articulate your values and what you're trying to accomplish and what you stand for? And if you are, to some degree, a small amount or a large amount are going to identify with that and rally behind it, good or bad. And so as leaders, as people that are teaching, we need to be accountable to make sure that it is good because sometimes you will do bad things. You will teach bad things and people will rally behind it. You will do bad things as an investment company or as a finance company. And people will rally behind it because those people will identify with bad values. We're sinners after all. So it's being able to articulate and to express and to stand for clear principles, a clear vision of who you are. And then also, also to allow those people to identify with it, but then to be responsible and have integrity and do what is right. And you will get people to follow you from a little bit to a lot, depending on what, it, you know, just the market, the, depending on the customer base, depending on how effective you are at doing those things. And with technology and the ability for anybody, the low barriers of entry to start a podcast, we're starting to see the group come together after years of podcasting, the refining, the people that are able to stick with it and to continue on. The people that you guys have rallied behind are starting to become greater than the institutions that were once the gatekeepers and held the keys, but they don't anymore because technology has removed the silos of knowledge. They've removed any pretense or being able to hide behind nuance, hide behind intellectual elitism. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the cream of the crop of the podcasts, the blogs rising up, the, the Fight, Laugh, Feast concert exceeding their goal by 100%. We were expecting two to 300 people. We have 750. We're sold out. We can't sell any more tickets. Tom Askell's conference in January, the Founders Conference, sold out. They're trying to find a big, bigger venue. <laughs> In the middle of this coronavirus pandemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, we're selling out of our conferences. We're growing exponentially. And yet we have these big institutions that were supposed to lead us collapsing. Their engagement's collapsing. You look at it online. You can see that stuff with online tools. You can look at their social media. It's terrible. It's because our whys are clear. It's because what we're standing for, you are rallying behind. So take that leadership principle and apply it in your careers. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.